there, live like your nail color gals. In an October 2022 article by the American Psychological Association, it says, quote, Americans are struggling with multiple external stressors that are out of their personal control, with 27% reporting that most days they're so stressed they cannot function. It goes on to say a majority of adults cited inflation, 83%, violence and crime, 75%, the current political climate, 66%, and the racial climate, 62%, as significant sources of stress, end quote. That is a lot of chip happening. Then there's your personal career, business, health, and relationships. If 2022 feels like one long, hot minute, you're not alone. Then I'm right there with you. That's why on today's podcast, I want to share from my own life an approach to looking at your year and how the power of being thankful can be an elixir to so much stress. Before we dive into our conversation, have you taken my quiz to determine your nail color persona? I always ask my guests to share their results, and I'm going to share mine this time because it's a fun way to get to know them. And all you have to do is go to livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz. You answer a few quick questions and in your results, discover your specific nail color persona, your built-in strengths, and how to tap into those strengths when chip happens. Again, go to livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz. Now let's get this party started. Tired of so much chip happening? Discouraged by so much downer news? Weary from chronic crisis? Don't let the chips keep you down. Welcome to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast, where the tips of your fingers and toes are ready to inspire you to not give up and to keep creating the business, career, and life you want. In each episode, we flip the chip and let our fun nail color with that crazy fun name cheer us on to remember our strengths, embrace the power of choice, see life as an adventure, and know resilience is only a touch-up or change-up away. Get ready for a good time and a good laugh with your host, Mary Foley. Welcome back, Live Like Your Nail Color Gals. Well, today is the day after Thanksgiving here in the United States. And I decided that in kind of recognition and celebration of this idea of being thankful, that I would, it would just be you and me. And I would share with you some things that have been happening in my life that have been kind of tough, been definitely kind of hard. And the things I've learned about gratefulness and gratitude, because as we go into this big holiday season that will at least go for probably a month, six weeks. It's so easy to get caught up in the swirl of it all with all these additional demands on our time or invitations, or frankly, also maybe the opposite, which is uh, the reminder that I'm not going to those things or that part of my life with young kids is just, it's not as quite as magical as it used to be, or I'm missing someone that I really wish we were together or was in my life. So it's just such a hard time of year in some ways. And yet it's also a time that can be so celebratory and authentically make you feel so good. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today. And and before we, I dive into more specifics of that, you know that every time I have on a guest, I ask her, well, what was your nail color persona based on my, what's my nail color persona quiz, which, you know, you can take it yourself at livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz. And uh, and then, you know, we find out, did that nail the person and, uh, you know, get to know them. So I wanted to share with you that I take my own quiz. And what I came out to is the nail color persona called Ama- an amazing adventurer. And um, that's because I like to mix up what's on my fingers and toes and, and try new things. And that's been of more recent. Now, I still have a go-to fave color. I'll get to in such a second. But, you know, amazing adventurer means that the, the write-up says you're inventive and imaginative. Your mind is always dreaming of new possibilities and you crave new experiences. And your joy is multiplied when others are adventurous with you. And that's true for me. Now, I, well, it's not always been necessarily where I craved it, but I'm always coming up with new things. And it's not, I'm 
braggadocious. In fact, the funny thing is my mom, who had four children, said, Mary, if I only had you, you would have kept me busy with all your projects. (laughs) <laughs> which I laugh at today because, yep, the projects keep coming. And and I'm grateful for that. I have to manage them a little bit better. But you have to, I have to watch out as the amazing adventurer because when chip happens or too much chip happens and things get kind of harder, I can lose that natural flow. I can start to feel worn out and pull back because of it. And, and I can, even if it's prolonged, I can get stuck. So I'm not immune to this as anyone else, right? So I'm a, this amazing adventurer. It has been an amazing adventurer kind of year. My go-to favorite color is red, which is probably not surprising either. And a big part of red reveals that I'm a passionate person and, and I'm ex- passionate about life. I, I I take action. I exude confidence, even though I always don't feel that way, but I just like kind of dive in and, and that inspires others is what that write-up about being red says. And, and I'm okay about taking some risk because I believe life must be lived. And so that means that, you know, it can have a little bit bigger chip sometimes. Uh, and that's why resilience is so important in living like your neo color. The thing about being an amazing adventure is, yeah, I know which one kind of gets my go-to fave, but I like to try other ones and see what happens and just see how it feels. So uh, about a week ago, I just finished a my seventh retreat, work retreat for business, um, as a business coach for women entrepreneurs. This time we went into the mountains of Virginia. And the whole idea of this retreat is, is that we take a few days away from the day-to-day of our businesses and our full lives. And we reflect and we reflect back and we look forward and we connect. And in that connection, we help to kind of mastermind and sort through challenges and figure things out. And uh, and then I also like to throw in something new that they're not always expecting to perhaps think about how they're pursuing uh, and going forward in their, their uh, business and in their life more. So in that process, here's something we do that you can do too. And I did it on myself. And I think it's a great time of year to do this. And I'd really encourage you that to do this maybe over the Thanksgiving break if in the United States, or at least everyone by the end of the calendar year, because it's also something that not only helps you reflect on the year 2022 and and find some real of the nuggets there and be able to kind of honor it, but also it sets you up for 2023 really well to look at that year with fresh eyes and, and kind of a clean slate. There were three main things uh, in this reflection of the year. We, uh, I challenged them to brainstorm on each of these and then come up with their top three of the following. What are your biggest wins for the year? Now, we did this, by the way, mainly uh, in the context of our businesses. But as women in particular, you know, we bring all of who we are to our businesses, our careers, anything that we're doing. And so I would say that you don't have to be a woman entrepreneur or small business owner to do this activity. And you don't have to limit it to your career or your profession or your business. You can think about your entire scope of your life and what you've experienced this year. So personal or professional, um, just brainstorm. What are the wins? What are the things that went well? What are the things you're proud of? And then circle your top three. And what helps is that not that those other ones don't count. Obviously they do, but it helps to really kind of rank order them some say and and get your mind focused again and remember sometimes you have to remember back a bit like what happened in January, February, March of this year. But remember and focus of those top three wins, things you felt really good about. The second thing is to ask yourself, what are my top three insights or ahas about the year? Now, insights and ahas can come from things that went well. They can often come from things that don't go so well or that were more challenging and they kind of surprised you. So these are like life takeaways that, you, if, if we are able to really mine out the simple insights and the ahas and the things, ah, I realized that 
the, those are the things we often don't do enough of, in my opinion. And we, but if we do, we can take those forward. You know, they're like lessons learned. And if we don't learn them, we typically are going to go through something to try and learn them again. So this is about being more conscious in this reflection of what are my lessons learned from this year? That frankly, whether they're a lesson of what not to do or what to do, I I still want to take those forward. So the third thing is to then, after you've looked at your top wins, your top three wins, and your top three insights, ahas, or lessons learned, you look at what are your top three things you're grateful for? And obviously, with Thanksgiving in the United States, that it's, you know, the first word is thanks, right? And this is giving thanks. This is about gratitude. This is about focusing on what went right. And, you know, the thing is, sometimes it's what went right, but sometimes it's what didn't go so right. But then this happened and you're grateful for it. Doing, asking yourself those three questions, taking, I mean, it it may take 15 minutes. It, you might want to take more time with this, or you might want to do a first pass of 15 minutes, almost like a brain drum, a brainstorming, and then come back to it and say, is there anything else here? And then circle your top three uh, of, of each of those. It's a, it's it's an it's interesting as well as just kind of really gratifying what you remember and what you learn uh, in ways that you kind of knew, um, but this is a different way of getting at it that I think adds some subtle but significant uh, significant nuance and takeaway. So I'm going to share with you as an example what I came up with for me and and uh, one. You know, this is a mix of personal and professional. And this was a big year for me, as I mentioned before. This was a big year of uh, some some hard things, but some very good things. Uh, and honestly, I'm tired right now. But let's go and re- go back. So what are my th- top three wins that I came up with? One of them is I moved. I moved from where I was living for 17 years in Richmond, Virginia, to an hour away to a much smaller town, Williamsburg, Virginia. Because uh, I wanted to be within two miles of my aging parents. My parents are 86 and 87, and uh, they can, they're they independently living right now, and they could use some more help. And I was doing that an hour away, but it was necessary, I thought, as I asked and I figured out, you know, if I were really close geographically, um, I could help more and it would be easier and um, uh, on them and, and on me. So um, I made that move and you probably have made a move where you had a home or you moved out of an apartment, but, you know, so we went through the whole process of selling, uh, putting our place on the market and then looking in a whole new geographical place. And uh, the beginning of this year in 2022, you know, the market, the real estate market was still very hot. Things were moving very quickly, particularly in areas that were uh, sought after. And um, it was a little nerve wracking, as you know, that even when you move and it's not nerve wracking in terms of finding the place and selling the place, it's packing everything up and moving it and going through all your stuff and all of that. A big win is that I actually did it (laughs) and I'm feeling good about the new place. Uh, And so that's a win. The second win, uh, I I mentioned this in a prior podcast a couple of weeks ago, just almost as a side note, but because I didn't want to take away from the, the guest, but I got married after 25 years of being divorced. Now, Bill and I have been with uh, together for like 17. So it's not like this was a new relationship. But the big deal and the and the win was that we made a next level commitment to one another. And um and we did it in a really fun way, like our way. And and I'll share a bit more about that in in a second. Um the third thing is, is that I launched this podcast. It had been a goal last year and this year uh, when the, you know, I was like, why haven't I gotten this done? You know, January one. And I'm like, ah, so I decided, all right, it's okay. You know, I had definitely been uh, taking steps and had been consistent, but it just had not been able to get there. My, I recorded my first podcast, uh, in, in January, um, first three in January, February timeframe, but I didn't launch the actual whole podcast, um, until, and get things going on a regular basis. So I could do it 
every week until April of this year. Um, you know, I didn't have the big plan that uh, here's the big marketing launch plan. And I didn't have all these things that I advise my clients to have because I just didn't have the bandwidth with the move. And, and in fact, that the whole getting the wedding thing wasn't even on the table at that time in the spring. But I mean, I was consumed and I have all my coaching clients and keeping that plate spinning. And so I gave myself the grace to say, hey, uh, we, we, we're going to do the minimum we need to get started and do this on a weekly basis. And so that's something I do advise my clients. And I want to live myself is that sometimes you just got to start. And as you start, you figure it out and you make it better and you make it better and you make it better. So I, I'm, it's a win that I started and I'm feeling pretty good about it, but it's just that I, I got started. So those are my three wins. Uh, I moved, I got married and I launched this podcast. Here's some of the insights from those wins and from my year. The first one is, is that change and transition is hard. Don't make it harder than it has to be, Mary. It is so easy for me to make it harder than it has to be. Like what I would tend to do is I would tend to not only have it all planned out, I might have it planned out to the nth degree. I might say, well, this is the timing that needs to happen, et cetera. And I make it harder on myself because of that. You know, for me, sometimes the amount of completeness around a project or around an event or around something that I'm doing. And sometimes I need to like back up the train and go, you know what? This level of planning or this level of preparation, it's good enough. It'll get the job done. And you won't completely wear yourself out. Because remember, Amazing Adventurer, I can sometimes wear myself out, perhaps a little too quickly and easily. And so that was one of my really big insights about change and transition is hard. Yeah, don't make it harder on yourself. And so one of the insights I have is, is to pay attention more closely when I need to slow down or take a break or adjust a plan so that it fits the moment better. One of my clients, uh, coaching clients and, and a good friend now, uh, her name is Kim Ely and she is the CEO of KWE Kiwi. Those are actually initials, but Kiwi is kind of how she says it, Kiwi Publishing or Kiwi Pub. And um, she instituted this year, she came up with the idea of what she calls spark days. She also tends to get worn out. And so she's said, I'm going to have full days that are I put on the calendar. They're blocked. They're a commitment to myself. And I might spend some of it alone. I might spend some of it with a friend. I might go and uh, look, go to a museum or a park. Or, I might do something, some little mini adventure that day that I've been wanting to do. So I can renew my spark. I love that example. You can have spark days. You can have spark hours. You can <laughs> maybe even have spark seconds. But the idea that she implemented that in such a very practical way on her calendar, I thought was really cool. So I, I paid attention to that as well. That was one insight. Uh, like I said, change and transition is hard. Don't make it harder than it has to be. The second insight is, that being thankful is an elixir to life. And that's, you know, when I think of an elixir, you know, I always think of like cocktails and mixed drinks, but it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, back in the day before lots of prescriptions, uh, prescription medicines, they had a lot of tonics that were um, medicinal and they had elixirs, you know, take this combination, this elixir to help with your headache or to help with your digestion or, or help with pain. Well, I think thankfulness and attitude of gratitude is like that. Just really being thankful uh, as you're going through anything. Um, and then the harder it is, I think the more you have to look for and have opportunities of what's going right and be thankful for that. You can be thankful for the big things, but thankful for the smaller things along the way. To me, it's like greasing the skids, as my mom used to say, you know, it's just makes the whole process of life easier and more enjoyable. And I think it's when it's hard, yes, but also when it's not hard, just that default perspective of being thankful and thanking people 
you know, thank the person at the grocery store uh, checking you out, uh, doing the checkout. Thank, thank uh, an ongoing client that they, you know, continue to pay on time. Thank the family member who uh, calls you, even though it has been a while and it was their turn. You know, you can just still thank for the small things. Thanks when someone brings you a cup of coffee when they didn't have to. You know, it's just having that default gratefulness uh, I, that to me, I realize it's not just like a good thing to do. It literally provides an elixir through life. And it, it for, for me, I can get in the funk and I can get stuck. So if you might be feeling that way right now, I'd say, ask yourself, what are you constantly thinking about? What's going through your mind? And, um, Oftentimes we have this inner critic all the time, all the time, chatter, 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 chatter. Well, and, and that'll produce feelings too. What are you feeling again and again? So some of us start, start more with the feeling, feeling. Some of us start more with the thoughts. It's all jumbled up in there though. And here's the thing is that if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling in a funk, ask yourself, what am I constantly thinking about? What am I feeling again and again and again right now? Be aware, identify, put words to it and take hold of those negative thoughts and feelings. Say, hey, listen, you're not in charge. I'm in charge and I'm going to redirect you. I may not be able to say, get them completely out of my head, but here's what I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, but I'm shutting you off. I'm putting you on mute. I'm toning down the volume. And I'm going to do that by redirecting my mind and uh, into into noticing what is going right. I'm going to redirect into something positive. I'm going to uh, remember being at the ocean or having going on vacation or a day away or something like from this past year where I felt so good and it was so fun. And I'm going to feel that again. I'm going to bring it up in my memory so I can feel it again because we have the choice of how, of whether or not those thoughts and feelings rule us or don't. And here's the interesting thing. When you redirect your mind on thoughts that are more positive and that you, things that you're thankful for, this is where the elixir can come in, uh, being uh, a, a thankfulness, then we, we, we just, we, we totally change our moment to moment existence. And that's why I think we have to raise our level of awareness of not only our strengths, which like, you know, fun way in the nail color quiz does, but of what's going on in the moment between my ears and 12 inches down in my heart. And if those feelings and those thoughts are critical, 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 negative, 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 well, of course, you're going to feel like a Debbie Downer. Of course, you're going to feel stuck, but we have the choice every moment to redirect and it is a skill and it is like a muscle and it is like uh, anything else that takes practice but the first is choosing that I want it to be different and then simply taking hold simple does not that someone I say simply doesn't I mean that be easily but it, it's possible so that was the second insight is to be th uh, that being thankful is an elixir. Here's the third insight as I really thought about it. Do your part and let God do the amazing. Do your part and let God do the amazing. So here's why that came to me as an insight. I was thinking about some of the wins that I've had and like, what are the, I'm, I'm grateful for these things. You know, like I said, my, my move and, and my marriage in particular were the two things I thought, wow, I'm so grateful for these things that happened in those wins that weren't planned. I didn't do it. Like I didn't see it coming, so to speak, you know? So when we moved, um, we were able to, we had our, our place, uh, our current home on the market. And so when we started to consider an hour away to live, we started looking at that marketplace of where what the homes were. And as I said, you know, the, the real estate market was in some areas hot. So we were looking in an area in a neighborhood that, you know, things didn't turn over so quickly. So there was this one townhouse that we went, oh, this could be great. But we had to make an offer on it or we might have lost it. 
And yet our other place wasn't in, under contract. And so we were like figuring out how we would do that. Uh, buy one while we had first, you know, sold the other. Well, anyway, we went to, ended up saying we're by faith, we're going to put a contract uh, on this or put an offer in and we did get a contract on the new place. And, um, and then I was like, okay, God, you got to come up with the rest of the money, you know, <laughs> get the contract on the other place. Well, about a week after that, we had someone who was interested and then they came back with an offer. We're like, no. So we negotiated for a bit. So it wasn't a for sure thing. While that was happening, we said, well, let's see if we can, we got time now, redo the floors and, and repaint uh, the new place before we move in. I'd never done redone floors uh, in, in a home. Uh, wow. I mean, just a little bit of advice. If you haven't uh, you can't really live there easily. Okay, <laughs> but we took out all this older carpet. We put in some um, laminate, to kind of fake hardwood, uh, and it's messy. And it's it's pretty much impossible to to live there and feel like you're anywhere, uh, you know, at ease. Well, here was the the underlying aspect: is we ended up getting a contract um, uh, for our home that we currently had. The time we, by the time we uh, had that closing, between the two homes, there was six weeks. And in that six weeks, we were able to, what I would say, by the grace of God, to get uh, the floors redone and the whole home repainted that we were going to move into. So when day one, when we moved in, we felt like we were not only in a new home, but we we're like getting set up. And within a few months, it felt like we had been here for several years. That is something that was to me so amazing. And we kept at it. We made choices about the hardwood and we did our, uh, you know, in the paint, we did our part, but really getting the contractors lined up, having all the uh, supplies come in and come in on time. To me, that was the amazing part. The second area was in my, um, in my marriage. And so here's what happened. We didn't really do this the traditional way as <laughs> the amazing adventure <laughs> might have. We've done the traditional way of both getting married, um, uh, but to other people uh, in a more traditional setting, and certainly myself in, in the church and the big wedding and all that stuff. And that's great. But we're at a different age and stage in life. And we'd been together for a long time. We really just wanted to have a big party. And so what we decided to do was have a big barbecue and then our way through the barbecue, get everyone's attention, welcome them, thank them so much for being there, and then say, we decided since you're all here, we want to do a thing, and we're going to get married. Now, that is what we did, but the asterisk and the caveat is, we also thought, does do, do we want all of our parents to know this in our family? No, right beforehand? No. So here's what happened. What happened is, is that we went ahead and we told our immediate family. And then uh, we told a few really close, close friends that we wanted to make sure was there. And then we didn't tell everybody else. So about 40% of the people knew, but 60% didn't. And what, and it was super fun to, uh, to, to have that marriage ceremony right there with all these friends and family, surprise a lot of people, and then go around and do a lot of high fives and hugs. Uh, but because we told our family beforehand, the amazing thing that happened, which was totally unexpected, is that we had family decide to come from Minnesota and from Houston and from North Carolina and from New Hampshire. That is something Bill and I did not anticipate at all. And we, in that moment, I remember thinking this collection of family will likely never be assembled like this again. And that's only because the likelihood is that, well, with aging parents and aging aunts and uncles, someone's probably not going to be able to make it or be around to make it for any kind of family gathering like that. And I never anticipated that our getting married would have that impact or have that effect. And I take no credit for that. I let God do the amazing and was just 
profoundly grateful for that moment. And it's forever seared in my mind of this picture. And so the third part of this whole thing of, of reviewing your year is to say, what are you grateful for? Well, after you go through your wins and your insights, it's probably going to be pretty easy to say what you're grateful for. And for me, it is. I'm grateful for marriage and having a new husband after 25 years. Sounds funny, funny to say, but it's taking our relationship to a new level. And I'm grateful for that because I didn't anticipate that. I'm grateful for this move and the opportunity to be near my parents at this age. Not everyone gets to have that opportunity. It just doesn't make sense or it's not possible. Um, and of course, I'm grateful for the new home that we have for all the reasons that I already shared. And I'm grateful for this podcast. I'm grateful that you are listening right now. Oh my gosh, that it's valuable enough that you want to listen and that you're allowing me to encourage you in even the smallest of ways. Because we live in some chaotic chip happens a whole lot times. We need places and spaces to feel good to think thoughts that are going to be helpful. I would love, love, love any feedback about what you love about this podcast, what you want me to continue to do, what you'd like to see different, or here's an idea. And all you have to do to do that is send me an email. That's the easiest way for me to go to mary at livelikeyourneocolor.com. So I leave you with this. How will you choose to experience your holidays this year? Will you choose to put yourself in a place of gratitude for no matter what your year ha you know has entailed? What are your top wins? What are your top insights? What are your what are you most grateful for? That's how you can shift your mind and your heart and put yourself in that positive space. And what would be the nail color I would wear doing all of that? Well, I've got three that I think are really fun just based on the names. And uh, one of them is called Gratitude is Everything. And it's a real nail color and it's a light brown shimmer. And it kind of like goes with almost everything. You know, it's kind of a neutral, but it's got a little bit of shimmer to it. So it's great for the holidays. Gratitude is everything or everything seems to start from there. That eliz elixir of life. Another nail color is called Make Spirits Bright. And it has those little Christmas lights on it. Uh, as the Amazing Adventurer, I really do like this one because it's fun and it's different and it's design, but make spirits bright. How can I make my own spirits bright? How can you make your spirits bright? Well, gratitude is a great place to start, thankfulness. And the third is a, a, a nail color that's green, which is not typically one I go to, a little shimmer on it, and it's called Yule, Y-U-L-E, like the Yule log. You'll be delighted. Of course, I just love the play on words, so Amazing Adventure Mary is going to try for the first time green nail polish. I don't know if it's really the first time, but very rarely do I have green on. But hey, how many people are going to notice that? And I'm going to be able to say, oh, I'm so happy you noticed. You'll be delighted. You know, put a smile on your face. These are three nail colors from colorstreet.com. And uh, I'll put the link in if you want to see them in person uh, to, to if you want to pick up some for yourself. Uh, but it's, I call it nail some fun. So it's colorstreet.com forward slash nail some fun. But no matter what nail color you, you wear this holiday, and maybe it's several, starting with Thanksgiving in the United States, going all the way to New Year's, what I want to just say is, as a last thing is being grateful. I focus on being thankful will always, always be a good move. And when the chips are happening harder than ever, one of the best ways to not let your chips keep you down is to remember what's going right, to remember the small things that you're thankful for, say them out loud, and put your head space and your heart space in a different place. <laughs> And now for the after party I call Flip the Chip, where I take a few moments to share something that can help us all flip a challenge or a difficulty that's holding us back into something more positive that helps us move forward. What I want to highlight today is a quick recap of how you can do your own review of 2022. There are three questions. One, what were your top three wins this year, personal or professional? Two, 
What were your top three insights, ahas, or lessons learned this year? Three, what were three things you were most grateful for this year? I suggest you brainstorm a list for each question and then circle your top three. That way you get it all out of your head and onto paper so you can see it all. For your wins, you may need your calendar to even remember what happened the first six months of the year. I know I did. But as you remember, I bet you will be surprised. Now, chances of are that identifying your insights, ahas, or lessons learned may be a bit more difficult. I encourage you to take time to be quiet and think more deeply. There are jewels there for you to find. And when you brainstorm about what you're most grateful for this year, the more specific, the better. For example, you may be grateful for your loved ones, but that may be true every year. So what are you specifically grateful for this year regarding your loved ones? And of course, you can use your nail color to cheer you on by simply putting on a new color and giving it one of the names that I suggested. Three that specifically inspired me are gratitude is everything, make spirits bright, and you'll be delighted. By the way, they are really nail colors that you can look at and you can see if you really like them too. And you can find them at colorstreet.com forward slash nail some fun. I'll put that link in the show notes. You can make good choices to create the career, business, and life you want. One step, one nail color at a time. I look forward to being with you next time on the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast. Thanks for listening to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast. Ready to live and laugh more? Know a friend who could use some of that too? Then subscribe at livelikeyournailcolor.com or your favorite podcast app. And share this episode right now with the person who popped into your mind. Together, let's flip the chip to be stronger, smarter, and happier.